We continue to follow breaking news out of South Bend. Right now, officers are on the hunt for an escaped inmate. At this hour, Lafayette Boulevard is closed from Sample to Bronson. You'll want to avoid that area. We're going to get right to ABC 57's Eric Stelzer. He's live at the St. Joseph County Jail with the latest. Eric, you've actually got a look at this um, suspect. What's going on at this point? Hey, Keith, well, right now, police have been able to find the suspect. They do have some K-9 units out here now just trying to find them. The South Bend Police Department, St. Joseph County Sheriff's Department, they're saying this man was originally arrested on burglary charges. We want to show you him here. Police are asking if you do see this man, make sure to call them as soon as uh, possible. He was actually an inmate worker here working at the jail uh, that he was staying at, but apparently he had some access to some sort of bread truck. Uh, the driver of that truck left their keys in the ignition. He went inside, took off, and then took through a gate here, and then left that truck over by Bronson. He went through the northeast exit, left that truck over on Bronson Street. There is some damage to that gate. Uh, police here say nothing like this has ever happened here at the St. Joseph County Jail since they built this. This is the first time it's ever happened. The jail over here in St. Joseph County is also going to be on lockdown. They don't believe that this man is a very violent person, but he is an inmate. They say anytime there something like this happens, take it very seriously. If you do see him, do, don't confront them. Call the police department. It's not a person you're going to want to confront by any means. He's still awaiting a sentencing here uh, that he was booked on for that burglary charge. We'll have more information for you as it becomes available. But once again, right now, they are still searching for this inmate. The street out here, this is just over by Sample Street, Lafayette Boulevard. That's what's going to be uh, closed this morning just for a little bit as they try to continue to search for them. That's going to be Lafayette Boulevard off Sample going down to Bronson Street. We'll have the latest information on our newscast tonight and our Facebook page to search ABC 57 News. Reporting live at the St. Joseph County Jail, Eric Stelter, ABC 57 News. This morning, three people are dead, including a child, and dozens are injured after the first successful bombing in the nation since the deadly September 11th attacks. Investigators are sifting through this dramatic footage from the finish line for clues. For the latest, we turn to ABC's John Coco. He joins us live from Boston. Good morning, John. Yeah, Keith, we got here to Boston late last night, just before midnight. Right now, we're in the city's north end, not too far from where those explosions took place yesterday near the finish line of the Boston Marathon. We're going to be here all day today tracking those latest developments. Obviously, thousands and thousands of people came here to Boston yesterday for the marathon, whether it was to run or to watch a family or a friend in the race. We're going to be looking to talk to some of those people today, trying to get you know, their experiences from this marathon, from this tragedy that happened here in Boston, as well as, as I mentioned, tracking some of these latest developments. We'll have those reports all day today. For now, we are live here in Boston. John Coco, ABC 57 News. The effects of the deadly explosion at the Boston Marathon can be felt right here. Two of the runners involved in Monday's race were coached by an area high school teacher. ABC 57's Jesse McDonough sat down with DJ Handback. He walked her through the tense moments right after one of his runners crossed the finish line. Yeah, Keith, Lisa Smith finished just one minute before the bomb went off, and her marathon coach told me he couldn't be more thankful. I was a little concerned because I hadn't heard from the one girl. Marathon coach DJ Handback says he was worried when tragedy struck at the Boston Marathon, and he didn't hear from the runners he trains who were competing in the race. Luckily, I got text from uh, automatic text when they both finished, so I knew that they had finished. One of his runners, Lisa Smith, was nearly part of the attack. She finished the race just one minute before the bomb went off. She heard the bomb too. They, they both heard the, and felt the shock. And as a marathon runner himself, he can imagine having such a shock during a race. The furthest thing from your mind when you're coming down to the finish line is that you're going to have to worry about something happening. That's you wait for that finish line at the Boston Marathon. He's just happy his two runners made it across the finish line unharmed. If one or two minutes slower, they would not have they would have been in that wreckage. Now I talked to Lisa Smith on the phone. She was boarding a plane last night to come back to South Bend. You'll hear more from her tonight on our 11 p.m. newscast. Reporting in the newsroom, Jesse McDonough, ABC 57 News. 
This recent tragedy has many of us wondering what will security now look like at events in Michiana. We have the Blue Gold game this weekend, plus many other marathons over the next month. ABC 57's Jasmine Norwood talked to a security expert about preparing for events like the Boston Marathon. Keith, the experts say that a lot of time goes into security preparations for major events, but they say that securing a marathon is extremely difficult because of all the miles that have to be covered. Edward Becker has years of national security under his belt. He says that anytime you go to an event with hundreds and thousands of people, you can expect there to be a higher risk level. With Notre Dame's Blue Gold game coming up and the Sunburst Marathon right around the corner, there's no doubt that security will increase. Now I think we're going to see a more heightened security at those two events. You'll see a lot more uniformed and probably plain clothes law enforcement presence. Becker says that the fact that there were two explosions is actually common. As a rule of thumb, he says if you hear one, you should pretty much expect to hear another. You, know, you hear the one within a couple seconds of the first one, you hear the second one go. Then everyone runs in that direction. Now you get the second one going off and now you have more casualties because you've gotten the people trying to escape the first one. Experts say if you're planning to go to any really large events with family and friends, always make sure to have at least two designated meeting areas just in case of a really big emergency. You don't want to have to rely on your cell phone. Reporting in Sturgis, Michigan, Jasmine Norwood, ABC 57 News. Stay with ABC 57 News for instant updates on the explosions at the Boston Marathon. Here's a quick recap. This morning, three people are confirmed dead. At least 141 people have been injured. And at this hour, 16 are listed in critical condition. Eight of the victims are children. You can get the latest information by staying connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, and ABC57.com. And breaking overnight, a U.S. helicopter crashes near the North Korean border. It went down during a training exercise near an army base just north of Seoul. The military aircraft was confirmed to be a marine helicopter. It carried 21 people. All of them were rushed to the hospital. As of this morning, 15 have been released, and so far, no deaths have been reported. Now here's a quick look at what's ahead on Good Morning America. Good morning. Coming up this morning, breaking news. Two explosions rocked the finish line at the Boston Marathon with three dead and hundreds injured. George and Josh are live on the ground covering every angle. That's next on GMA. Tracking the rain this morning, it's really clearing out. By 7 o'clock, most of this rain will be done. Still a few showers lingering in the Warsaw area in southern Elkhart County into LaGrange and exiting portions of Marshall County this morning. Forecast for today, we're going to stay cloudy bit of sunshine, but highs are cooler in the mid 50s. Rain returns. Our rainy week will continue tonight into tomorrow. Wednesday thunderstorms. Thursday is our day to watch for possibly some stronger storms and the heaviest rainfall. We may see some minor flooding concerns as we go through the rest of this week as we move to above normal rain totals so far this spring and we'll likely see some heavy rainfall on Thursday. The weekend though looks a OK. Blue gold game coming up Saturday, Sunday 56 60 on Monday. We'll continue to follow that breaking news out of South Bend. Again, police are on the hunt for an inmate who escaped from the St. Joseph County Jail. We'll be back. Well, we'll see you tonight at 5 and Jimmy's up next. We'll talk to you later.